Trump Commerce Secretary and all-around ghoul, Wilbur Ross, because he looks like he's about to die or is already a corpse, uh, just apparently took a victory lap over the concerns about the Chinese-born coronavirus. Take a look. Well, first of all, every American's heart has to go out to the victims of the coronavirus. So I don't want to talk about a victory lap over a very unfortunate, very malignant disease. But the fact is, it does give businesses yet another thing to consider when they go through their review of their supply chain. And top of all the other things, because you had SARS, you have the African swine virus there, now you have this. It's another risk factor that people need to take into account. So I think it will help to accelerate the return of jobs to North America, some to U.S., probably some to Mexico as well. Oh, that's a good point. Oh, oh man, that, that's totally a good point. How are you talking about that? I don't want to take a victory lap, though, but I'm totally going to take a victory lap because, uh, look, the, the jobs, they're going to come back to either U.S. or Mexico, so that might be good. Now, what would the reason for that be? Oh, right, Chinese people dying from the coronavirus. Look, uh, or to be extremely charitable to Ross, by the way, the fear of the disease making companies pull out of China and back to the United States. Either way, you can take that, that take, put it in the trash, along with Wilbur Ross. Both are garbage. All right. So let me give you some details uh, about coronavirus, by the way. Uh, as of Thursday, there have been more than 7,700 confirmed cases of the virus, and the death toll in China has hit approximately 170 people. Uh, so now look, uh, as Ross said, hearts go out to uh, people in China. But let's put it into perspective. China is an enormous country, right? Gun violence across America on New Year's Day alone killed 177 people. China, way bigger than the United States, and yet in one day, we have more gun violence than coronavirus uh, has killed. Now, that doesn't mean that coronavirus isn't dangerous and that they shouldn't take precautions about it. I'm just trying to put this in perspective, right? Um, 45,000 people a year die in America without access to health care. Imagine if coronavirus happened here. Do you think that we would have the same kind of response? Chinese, it took them like three days to like build two hospitals so they could immediately start trying to treat cases of coronavirus and prevent deaths. Do you think something like that would happen in the United States? I don't think so. No, I think most of our politicians, Trump included, would be running around like chickens with their head cut off. They wouldn't know what to do. There would be mass panic. Uh, and so... I don't have any faith in how this government would respond. Um, and again, no faith because there's a millions of people who don't actually have health care at all. So again, perspective, right? But back to Wilbur uh, for a second here. To spike the football because it might help American jobs is pretty ghoulish. I mean, that's horrid. OK, uh, so but the, the, the reason that they do this, of course, is that the Trump administration, of which Ross is part of, is desperate for a win. The economy grew to about uh, grew about two point one to two point three percent this last quarter. That's not very good. That's way under the three uh, percent that the Trump administration had promised. Right. Uh, and had expected. And so. That is, is fairly disastrous. They are underperforming. And why is that? Of course, it's because you have jobs that uh, the, the basically the only jobs that are available are for half the population are low paying service sector jobs. No pay or low pay, no benefits, uh, not great jobs, right? And again, about half of all Americans end up working in these jobs. You also have student loan debt. Uh, that is it still at record highs with no end in sight. The price of homes and vehicles is out of reach for many, many people. Uh, and so there's no growth in that. So what else do they got for re-election? That's what this is about. This is about politics. The Trump administration gave 
uh, $1.5 trillion in tax cuts to the rich. That made, of course, by their, uh, by their stock back, making the stock market go up, thus giving the appearance of a growing, robust economy. In reality, you've got wages that are stagnant for regular people. Yeah, sure, we're awash in jobs, lowest unemployment, but the good ones are still really hard to find because right now there's little incentive to hire for these good-paying jobs as people don't have enough money to buy what the companies actually make. So there's that. At least not without taking out massive amounts of credit, which, by the way, credit cards uh, are over a trillion dollars as well uh, in debt. Uh, in the, in this country, and that's followed, uh, and and it follows student loan debt as being the most amount of debt that people owe here in this country. Uh, so, all this debt has a couple of different, um, well, things happen. A couple of different things happen when people have so much debt. Uh, it prevents them, of course, from getting houses, cars, starting families, for a couple of reasons, as I said. Uh, they would prefer to either not get into more debt until they start paying it off, or um, they just decide, you know, to do- put off things like cars, families, uh, houses, and things like that. Uh, and that's the reality for a lot of people. Okay. Now, Wilbur Ross and the Trump administration, they know this, and their only solution is, I don't know, let's cheer on the coronavirus so that these companies might send a few jobs back to America. Well, that's not a solution. Nobody seems to have a solution when it comes to the prevention of offshoring of jobs to low-wage countries where they can exploit their workers. But that's a bit of a broader conversation. What's gross here is that Ross thinks uh, a possible global pandemic would actually be better for American businesses. And to them, all of this seems like just politics and profit. Hey guys, hopefully you enjoyed that free video. Now I'm going to have to ask you a favor. Between the uh, demonetization and the YouTube algorithm messing around with view counts, etc. We're having a hard time adjusting to the new YouTube reality, which is where you guys come in. See, we have a Patreon, patreon.com slash TYTNation set up to help us rely on the you guys, the viewers, instead of big corporate ads. Look, you know the show. You know how I'm not in favor of big corporations anyway. So help us transition away from relying on the ad model to pay the bills and sign up to be a patron, patreon.com slash TYT Nation. That goes a long way to help us keep the lights on. And you guys will know that you're supporting independent progressive media.